Hello, Professor Miller here. Today we're going to be talking about narrative. Today, during our discussion of narrative, we're going to cover four things. One, choices for organizing facts. Two, narrative organization and narrative elements. Three, the utility of narrative to lawyers. And four, the classical plot structure. So, You've started interviewing, gathering facts, exploring new areas with your clients. But what do you do now with all these facts? Do you hold them to be self-evident? If there were a simple one-to-one -one correlation between what the client tells you and what the judge hears, you would not be necessary. You have a crafting role here, a mediating role between the client and the judge, and that's what we're discussing today. Together with your client this semester, you'll be deciding what facts to include, and what facts not to include, and how we want their, our facts to be understood. There are three primary approaches to organizing facts and telling a client's story, paradigmatic, chronological, and narrative. In paradigmatic, it's a mathematical approach. You start with the legal elements and identifying correlating facts. It's very useful ensuring the legal elements are met and can be helpful for things like briefs and closing statements, places where you're trying to match the facts with the legal elements. However, this approach can be very boring. Next is chronological. This is a timeline approach. It's useful for identifying gaps and internal inconsistencies and can be helpful for trial prep, transfer memos and notes, or parts of your direct or in the procedural history section of a brief. One of the downsides of the chronological approach is that it doesn't always highlight the most important things and take advantage of the power of primacy and recency. And lastly, narrative. This is storytelling. It's often the most or more persuasive because of audience expectations. It's useful in places like opening statements or statements of facts in a brief. And here in narrative, we're really making strategic decisions about what to emphasize and how to frame things. And while this is often very persuasive, we need to be careful to ensure all the legal elements are met. So today, we're going to explore how narrative theory, that is, the theory of why stories are persuasive and how persuasive stories are constructed, can help us in designing and telling our story and in developing our facts so as to strengthen that story. We're going to start by reviewing two central themes from your readings this week, element of narratives and plot structure. But first, I'd like to read a quote from the book Stranger Than Fiction that I think perfectly distills narrative and its utility. We live our lives according to stories about being Irish or being black, about working hard or shooting heroin, being male or female. And we spend our lives looking for evidence, facts and proof that support our story. Each time you create a character, you look at the world as that character, looking for the details that make that reality the one true reality. Like a lawyer arguing a case in a courtroom, you become an advocate who wants the reader to accept the truth of your character's worldview. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between story and narrative. Stories are how we divide life into manageable, digestible, comprehensible events. It's what's told. It's the events, the character. It's told in real time. It's often what you're going to find in your case file or the intake documents. Narrative, in contrast, is how the story is told. It's all about choices of details, the mood, the ordering of the events, and it's told in narrative time, which means you're looking at things like where you're speeding up or where you're slowing down and thinking strategically about that decision. So why does narrative matter to lawyers? Well, it's how our minds work. Stories are everywhere. Stork, stock stories help show what the ending should be. You know, we know how the story ends or the moral of the story. They can be used to show the judge how a story should end. And they can help us reconcile the judge's expectations with unexpected deviations. Narrative structure parallels the lawyering structure. We want to know all of the facts and details to make sure we have all the necessary information to prove up our cases. And good storytelling can really help us overcome gut reactions and assumptions. 
And when done well, it's persuasive. This is because it aligns with the way that our brains perceive information and makes logical sense to us because we are natural storytellers. Finally, narrative improves the client-centered luring relationship. It's driven by the client's goals. It allows us to give our clients a voice in how they want to be portrayed in the proceedings. I think it's also important to note that narrative can further goals of justice and professionalism because it allows lawyers to think systemically about how the client's story fits into our obligations to strive for justice. We can talk to our client about their particular context and the way that context is informed by unequal operation of power. Narrative is also a good place to incorporate critical legal theories, such as feminist theories or critical race theory, to frame the context for the narrative. So how do we use storytelling as lawyers? Well, let's use an inter interviewing as an example. An interview is a looping conversation. There's forward movement, there's circling back, there's occasional tangents, reiteration, verification, elaboration, explora exploration, explanation. So we get a lot of information. So we need to think about how do we organize it? How do we give all of this information meaning? Well, the answer is narrative. We use narrative listening and probing. For instance, listening and probing for events, including setting and timeline to understand what happened, where, over what period of time. We learn what events are important to our client or what are event, and also what events are difficult to talk about. So what are the elements of narrative? Well, the first element is character. That's the who. Who are the people in the narrative? What are their traits, their goals, their agency, their motivations, their emotions, their belief? We want to know enough about a character so that the audience knows who they should be rooting for and why. Next is the events, the what and the where. What happened? Where did it happen? What is the scene or the setting? What's the timeline? Third, rhetorical components, such as causation. That's the why, the cause and effect between events. Cognitive science shows us people are wired for looking for cause and effects, so we need to explain it in our narrative. Normalization. Is the information that we're hearing internally consistent or externally consistent? Is this what the judge is expecting to hear? master plot. Who should we root for? Narrative can make us make use of normative stories that get told and retold and connect to our values, wishes, and fears, and therefore are persuasive. For example, David and Goliath. That's a master plot about rooting for the underdog. And narrative can also be constructed to under, undermine a known master plot. For example, the master plot of the bad mother who didn't leave an abusive relationship can be undermined by a new narrative of a good mother who smartly calculated the risk of greater violence and a lack of, and lack of economic uh, resources if she were to, re to leave her abusive relationship. So we need to know how to use master plots or counter them in order to persuade our audience listening to our narrative. And finally, closure. How does the story end? Narrative usually involves a problem that disrupts a character's steady state. So we need to be thinking about what is the closure that that character is seeking? What is the resolution in the course of the narrative? It's also important to note that a lot of these rhetorical components are also really critical for thinking about credibility. Is the story internally consistent? Is it plausible? Is it detailed? Lastly, I'd like to talk for a moment about classical plot structure. It's got three central elements, an initial steady state grounded in the legitimate ordinariness of things. Then there's some sort of problem, a disruption, journey, actions, and events. And then finally, a resolution. Either the old steady state is restored or a new transformed steady state is created. This should sound really familiar to you because that's what most of our children's books are centered around. Once upon a time, then one day, and they lived happily ever after. And most of these stories include some sort of coda, 
or the moral of a story, such as all's well that ends well, pride goes before a fall, and pretty is as pretty does. As you work on your cases this semester, I want you to be thinking about how you might be able to apply the classical plot structure to the telling of your case. Here's an example we might use in a divorce case. It starts off with a happy family. And then there's a problem, a loss of a job due to the pandemic, which creates stress on the relationship and the marriage crumbles. And then there's a resolution. Our client wins her divorce and looks forward to building a new happy future. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to seeing how narrative shows up in your lawyering this semester. Good luck.